Well, my name is Zachariah Gordon. I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. I was diagnosed when I was 11. I'm 22 now. So exactly half my life I've had it. Type 1 diabetes. As you might imagine, living with diabetes is difficult for anyone. But that is especially true for Zachariah and the millions of teenagers diagnosed with the disease. It's kind of like being an alcoholic with, you know, all your friends drink. You're around all this Mountain Dew, all this, you know, junk food. Everyone's eating and you're just like, mm, I can't do it. You know, which you want to, but you can't. It's a challenge, for sure. Um, it's uh, day to day, it's, it gets, it's, uh, it's old. Something you have to live with. For Zachariah, the challenge is diabetes. For others, it may be heart disease, cancer, or a spinal cord injury. But in all cases, one organization believes there is hope through advancements in adult stem cell research. John Paul II Stem Cell Research Institute is a nonprofit organization that focuses on and is unique because it coordinates the efforts between private industry, institutions, and academia in order to take theories to a therapy. Kim Lehman with the John Paul II Stem Cell Research Institute points to progress in the area of diabetes as an example of the potential medical advances through the use of adult stem cells. But it's not just progress in a cure for diabetes that JP2 is interested in, it's the potential for curing a number of debilitating diseases, cures that will be found in labs like this one by research scientists like Dr. Alan Moy. Uh, beneficiaries of JP2 will be the the general public. It is to provide treatment, new treatments in regenerative medicine using adult stem cells for patients who have diseases in which they currently do not have an option. Dr. Moy is the founder of the biotechnology company Cellular Engineering Technologies, also known as CET. His BioLife company is working closely with the John Paul II Stem Cell Research Institute. When I started to look at in this country how adult stem cells was evolving. It was very clear that there were a lot of deficiencies in this country in terms of promoting adult stem cell research. The biggest reasons are there is, in this country, academic scientists are, appear more, for whatever reasons, are more interested in embryonic stem cell research. Embryonic stem cell research has not only ethical concerns, but safety concerns. And the reason is because they are genetically unstable and they cause tumors. Where in contrast, adult stem cell research is very promising and doesn't have ethical concerns. And at this point, they're actually taking therapies from the bench, the scientific bench, all the way over to the bedside. Yet despite the setbacks from embryonic stem cell research compared to advances in adult stem cell research, many in the medical community are determined to advance the cause. Embryonic stem cell research is very well known partly because of the politics and that the media is propagating that. And one of the things that John Paul II Stem Cell Research Institute is focused on is educating the public on medical ethics that is consistent with the dignity of human life. To ensure researchers stay on that path, John Paul II Stem Cell Research Institute is advancing the understanding of adult stem cell research while providing researchers, like Dr. Moy, with the tools they need to advance the science. There are few pockets of universities that are conducting stem cell research. It's not a very uh, uh, per pervasive type of uh, research that's conducted in all universities. So there are only a very few universities that are doing that. Another part of John Paul II Stem Cell Research Institute vision and mission is to educate the scientific community to use adult stem cells and to increase the number of future medical professionals that will be introduced to the use of adult stem cells. Without that education and without the resources John Paul II provides to researchers like Dr. Moy, progress in the field of adult stem cell research could find itself at a standstill. Developing clinical therapies for using adult stem cells requires a, a more enormous amount of resources that really falls outside the scope of a company like CET. And I would say that conducting clinical research with adult stem cells is probably exceeds uh, the, the resources for any type of for-profit enterprise as far as, um, in, in my opinion. 
Uh, it really requires the collaboration between industry, academia, and the private sector. And so JP2 really is working on the translation of taking stem cells from the bench into the clinical trials. Right now what we do is we treat people with diseases with drugs and we continually retreat them with another drug over and over again. But what we want to do is to be able to cure that person and that is real hope. I think from the standpoint of CUT, it's very important that a company like us has a partner like JP2. My vision for JP2 is really to serve two goals, one of which is to advance therapy using adult stem cells for treating a number of disorders. And the second is to train the next generation and the current a group of scientists in the proper bioethics of regenerative medicine using stem cells. I one day hope that they will be able to find a cure for diabetes. And maybe not even just diabetes, but you know, all diseases. I'd say persevere. If it's this successful now, it'll be far more successful in the future as the research continues and it is so promising. I believe definitely that with the help of John Paul II that diabetes will be cured in my life. I strongly believe that. How long is it going to take? It's hard to say. It could be five years, ten years, but we're looking at healing and finding the cures for diabetes, spinal cord injuries, people with lung disease, heart disease. One thing I know for sure is that there's real hope. Here's how you can help or learn more about John Paul II Stem Cell Research Institute. Call us at 319-688-7367 or visit us online at www.jp2sri.org. Please get involved and donate today.